Okay, loosen up a little bit. All right, my hands are ready to start drawing. Now we're gonna draw using texture, an important art word, texture. Uh, we've already controlled and mastered the seven magic words. So now a special art word will help us do something exciting to the sides of our drawing, to the walls of this birdhouse. Now draw a light guideline in direction seven, not going horizontally straight across your paper, but slant this line, the roof of the birdhouse, in direction seven. And now from right here, draw an A. Okay. Now we'll take this and we'll extend this line down just a bit, a little bit longer than this far line. Remember what magic word we're using here? This is surface, the near corner is a little bit lower. Now when you use texture on the side of a building or the side of an object you're drawing, it makes the drawing more interesting, a little more exciting, and it makes the drawing come alive. You see, if you're, if you're drawing the side of a building and you just leave it blank, it's kind of boring and dull, right? Well, if you use texture, you can put bricks or you can put Oh, stones, you can put wood slats, you can put grass on the side of a building to make a grass hut in the middle of a jungle. See, it's all up to texture to make your drawing a little more interesting for your eye to look at. That's what these art words do. They help enhance your drawing. Now we're going to draw a thickness here in direction. What direction is this? Direction one. Okay, now this is the roof of our birdhouse. Make this a little thicker than the far side. I'll darken it so you can see even better the detail. Now, here's a direction seven line, the direction seven line here. Now let's draw the birdhouse tapering down and we'll draw the tree branches and the tree trunk holding up the birdhouse platform. Draw the inside thickness. Now stop right there. Here's the trick I'm gonna show you. We'll extend just a bit. Stop right there. Don't connect these two lines, but we'll draw a slant coming down from this point. Now watch this, slant it down just a bit. And see how neat that looks? It looks like it's really attached to the roof right there, doesn't it? Now. I'm going to measure the thickness to make sure we'll draw this line coming down right here and then we'll draw, well it comes in about that much so we'll do the same distance off the side here and slant this down. Direction one, direction seven. This is the vertical line here in the middle. Now we'll draw some guidelines going in direction. What direction is this right here? That's direction seven, right? Direction seven, direction seven for the shingles. Now we're going to add texture. This is a blank side. This is a nice blank side, so we'll do some texture on the side here. We'll draw some texture. Like, so these are guidelines for the shingles. And then we'll draw the first wooden shingle. And see how they all line up along this guideline? Okay, another shingle right here. Now watch this. This is kind of interesting about the shingles, is I'm going to offset each one. I'm not going to come straight down with a line, but almost like bricks. If you ever start drawing bricks, you'll notice that the bricks are offset just a bit from each one. See how this line matches the slant of the roof, but you offset them. Okay, it's offset there. It's offset here just a bit, but it matches that slant. And then look at this. This is going to overhang. This is going to overhang out here. It makes it look a little rough, a little loose. It really has a lot of character to it if you don't make the lines too straight and too defined. Direction seven, direction seven. Now watch this. This will overhang just a bit over here on the end. Okay. Now, same thing here slanting. Now these are fun. You can add these details. If I'm going too fast for you, you can get add these in later on to your drawing. We'll add the bottom part of the shingles here. See, now these are offset just a bit. They're not all just cut off straight across here. This is an old birdhouse. It's been in all different kinds of weather. So it Hello, Commander. Hi, Meta Man. How are you? Just fine. <laughs> That's great. What is that? What are you wearing? Well, I was watching you build your birdhouse here, and I thought I would show you my bird mask. Really? Are we going to be doing something with masks later on? Later on, I'm going to be building masks. That looks really smooth. It's a, you're going to be telling us about what kind of material you use, huh? Yes, sir. Great. I'll be watching. Okay. See you later. See you later, Meta Man. You might want to get your notepad ready so you can take some notes on that, how to make your own masks. Now. I'll add, finish the shingles here. Now, I was telling you about how old this birdhouse is. See, it has a lot of character. And so you can show how old it is by how flimsy the roof looks. But it's not really flimsy because it's really well made. Okay, see, it has a lot of texture to it. Now, this is a blank wall here, so we can add some more texture. So we'll draw some wood slats coming down. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot to put the perch for the bird to sit on. The bird, this will be hollow inside here. We'll put a hole, but let's draw a perch coming out so the bird can stand. Here's a direction seven line and direction seven line. So draw a curve right here. 
and match this direction seven line with the perch. Okay, line these lines up. That should be direction seven line two. Okay, and the perch actually gets larger as it comes away. All right, and then draw the end of four short in circle. And now let's draw the opening so the bird can get into his birdhouse. Now this part of the opening will be hidden, but we'll draw the circle, a light circle. You see the part of the circle that will be hidden by the birdhouse. And then we'll draw the thickness on the bottom. You can see the bottom of it. You can also see the right side. Now remember the trick to remember what side the thickness goes onto a window? Remember how you do that? Well, if you put a window on the right side, the thickness is on the right side. If you put a window on the left side, the thickness is on the left side. The same thing right here. See the windows on the right side. Now, I'll make it dark inside here because the birds are out getting some donuts or something, <laughs> so they turn off the light inside their bird home. And oh, we, for the thickness and for the texture here, draw some wood grain. Wrapping around a knot hole, I'll put a, a knot hole right here. Draw some more wood grain. Wood grain is really important. You can also use the wood grain here for shading. I'll draw some wood slants coming down here. Something interesting about the shading on the post, it's dark underneath here and it gets lighter and lighter as so it moves up. Shadings cast across the face of the birdhouse. It's dark underneath here because of shading. The sunlight's coming up here. Put a dot below the center for the platform. Direction one, direction seven. Don't come straight to the corner. Go behind the corner in direction one. Draw the platform. Direction one, direction seven. Shade the left side. And it's especially dark underneath underneath the roof right there. Now, let's draw the branches connecting. Okay, so use these overlapping lines coming down here. And then we'll draw the tree limb holding up this birdhouse. It's a pretty heavy birdhouse, so it needs a real thick branch to hold it up. And then add some shading here. And then some dark cast shadow underneath here to make it look like that tree branch is really holding up. That big tree house. <laughs> okay, I like getting into my shading. Okay, and then draw some texture on the side of the tree. See, I'm using a scribbled texture here to make it look like there's really some surface on that tree branch. And you can even look at this. You can even add a, a leaf here, maybe a leaf here. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing 30 minutes a day and add texture to your drawing to make it more interesting. I've done it! I finally organized a club, a drawing club just for you. It's called the Secret City Drawing Club. You want to become a member? Okay, I'll tell you how. Each week, I have a special drawing activity I want you to complete. And as soon as you complete it, you put it into an envelope, you mail it to me, and as soon as you put it in the mailbox, I'll make you an automatic member of the elite, super cool drawing club, the Secret City Drawing Club. Now, this week's drawing activity is for you to draw your own floating township, your own space secret city floating up in space. It could be underneath a bubble. Or look at this example. This is by Reed, and he had his floating city actually floating beneath a space platform. Isn't that neat? That's a good idea for your own floating city.
Now, I want to make this drawing club more popular than than rock and roll music. So as soon as you finish your drawing, mail it into the Secret City Club Post Office Box 444 Moraga, California 94556. Today we are going to be making some masks. And I think you'll find this particular way of making a mask a fun way and an easy way. I am going to be using friendly plastic compound and this is pretty unique because it melts at very low temperatures and then it cools quickly and you can mold it or roll it and I'll show you how it's done. Now, the compound looks like this. Plastic pellets and when I put it in warm water, it will melt it together. You don't need very much and I'll show you exactly how it's done. I'm going to pour some water over here in my glass baking dish. Now it's boiling, so be careful. And then I pour some of my pellets right here. I'm going to just use a half of my glass here and make sure all the water touches it. I need some more water. And this melts very quickly, about 30 seconds. Now, while that's melting, what I'm going to do is I am going to put some vegetable oil on my wax paper here, and that will make it very easy for the compound to roll on my rolling pin. It won't stick. Now, let's see. This is ready. I think it is. Now, what I think I'll do first is I'll remove the water carefully from my baking dish. And now this compound cools off very quickly, as you'll see, because I'll be able to actually mold it with my hands. It's not hot at all. Put it here in my vegetable oil and begin to actually roll it out. See, it won't stick and it's very, very pliable. I'm going to try to make an oval shape. I'll make a half mask for myself. You can make it as thin or as thick as you want. shape. Now what I think I'll do now is I will take this knife and cut away the parts that I don't want. I don't need that section here and I'll cut off this section here. I'll make sort of a, an interesting bug mask. Cut off this section over here and I'm going to begin to uh, maybe put two eyes right here. Now you'll see that it molds very, very easily around my fingertips, or I can mold it with my fingertips, I should say. Make buggy eyes. This would be a weird Halloween mask. And then what I'll do is I'll start making a nostril all the way down here. Now what you can do is with the excess pieces that you don't use, you can put it back in the water. I'll show you right over here. And this will melt down again, and I'll be able to adhere it to my mask. This is sort of a distorted face, but after it hardens, what I can do is cut back all the, the uh, pieces that I don't need. Now you can get a rough idea how I can do this. Now, when it gets very hard, and here's one that I've been working on, I can paint it. I can just use acrylic paint and it sticks very easily to this mask. Now, I'll show you how easy it is. Do some painting here. I've been uh, painting it red, blues, and pinks. I just add some yellow here. It dries very, very quickly. And then after the yellow dries, 
what I'll do is maybe I'll put some blue or red paint on it. You know, creating masks make me appreciate even more the strange faces that I sometimes see in paintings of great artists. Clay's paintings of the circus world contain some very, very odd creatures. If you have an art museum in your town or nearby, you should spend some time looking around. And you'll get some great ideas for your drawings and for your masks. There. Now, I'm going to show you some other ideas that I have gotten from other mask makers. We have some beautiful masks here, as you can see. This one looks like a Greek mask. And we have a lion's mask, or a tiger's masks, and even a very realistic face with a large nose. Try making your masks. They're really a lot of fun, and they're very easy to do. I have some really clever drawings I want to share with you at the Secret City Gallery. Let's take a look. Now, this is Eric Merce's drawing. Now, this is his preview drawing before he really conquered that flat piece of paper with those seven magic words. Now, take a look at the There's the tree and his airplane and donut and then a robo in his house. But look at this. Fifteen days later, Eric was drawing like this. Beautiful. Could you see that control? Isn't that just amazing? Nice ideas. Why don't you look at it for a second and get some ideas for your own secret city. And look at the different textures. See if you can pick out, there's three different textures there. Can you pick out the different textures? Nice control. Good job, Eric. Let's look at another secret city. Here's a secret city drawn by Todd. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the stairways. Nice shading. The use of surface, that magic word surface. The near part of the stairways are drawn lower in the paper and the far part. And good control of size. Isn't that really exciting when you see that? Okay, that gives you some more ideas for your own secret cities. You can create your own marvelous, fantastic secret kingdoms with all these ideas, with the magic words, and the magic word and the important word we learned today, texture. Now I'm going to be adding a really interesting diving platform near my pond right here on the Secret City mural. I hope you're getting some ideas for your own mural, right? Okay, now today we're learning textures, so instead of using, oh, like up here I used the leaf texture, really nice curved lines, or I used the scripple texture to give the idea that this is a tree trunk, a wooden tree right here, or I gave a crosshats texture right here to give the idea of stone. I'm gonna use little tiny round circles to give the texture of cement. Let's try that. Right here, I'm going to sketch in my diving platform so the Unibear, see the Unibear wants to jump off down here and cool off in the orange lake. And so I'll sketch in really loosely my diving platform. And then I'll take my thick pin. I'll draw the four shorts and square on top. See, later on, I'll add that little Unibear hanging from the tree. Now, the diving platform has to have some way, some little wedge sticking out so that the bear can jump off the end of the platform. Okay, so I'll, let me see here, how about, let me not here in direction seven, and direction seven, direction one, make it a really thin diving platform. And then we'll continue this down vertical. Now I wanna put another platform over here. We'll have a, a maybe a stepping system so that they have a, a way to climb up to the top. Now I wanna challenge you. When you're looking at, when you're walking through town or at school, look for different textures in, on the walls, or on the sidewalk, or on the trees, or on the chain link fences. There's all textures all around you. Keep your eyes open and take a look at the textures. And I'll draw one more foreshort and square over here. Okay. Mitterman has some more objects he wants to share with us. Let's take a look. Now this mask is quite different from the other masks that I showed you. This mask 
is almost like a helmet. And from the helmet, it goes right into a half face mask. It's a bird. And the mask maker has glued feathers on it to make it a really very attractive mask. And besides masks, you could also sculpt different types of things. Here's a flower painted yellow and looks very, very nice. Here are some creatures, a white dragon creature with scales and a long tail. And this is a very intricate dragon. There's lots of texture and a lot of detail. Claws and beautiful wingspan, ferocious looking teeth, a red tongue, and it has horns. It almost looks like it can fly. Try your hand at sculpting either creatures or masks, and you'll have a lot of fun. That was neat, wasn't it? All those different things. Now, I'm going to try texture here, a different texture than the scribbled and different texture than the cross hatching. I'm going to draw small little circles on the left side to represent shading, and we'll see what kind of texture this can make it resemble. Look at what you can do. Now, see, there's lots of different textures you can keep up your sleeve when you're drawing. There's cross hatching, there's scribbling, there's little plaid and checkered designs. You can use triangles and squares and geometric shapes to create a texture. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. I'll see if I can fill this hole, almost like scales down the left side, right? I'll draw some over here. Textures are fun to play with, huh? Because you have all these different designs that you can pull out of your sleeve. Okay, and I'll add a little bit of shading over here on the left side. See, I'm using texture to represent shading. That's a nice idea. Now, do you remember what magic word this near part of the step, see that near part? This near part's lower in the paper. What magic word is that? Remember? Let's see if Elmo can help you remember it. Did you get it? Right, surface. Now, I'm going to make a unibear hanging here off the tree. I'll draw the bottom of the unibear's foot. And using texture again, I'm going to give a nice furry texture. You see how I use these lines to create texture? And I'll put his little paws there. Another four shorts and circles. So he's swinging in the tree using texture. And then I'll draw a nice chubby little belly here, furry belly. And then his arms will be up with his little finger and his mitten hand using texture, see how furry it looks, right? And then we draw a little nose and a smile and then his eyes. I'll get my finer point pen and I'll outline his nose right here and give him an ear. And we can't forget the uni unicorn, unibear horn right here, huh? That's what makes him look special. Texture is really important, that nice furry shape. And then I'll take my pencil and I'll shade it in a little bit. And then, I'll draw the hand hanging on top of the tree up here. See his arms reaching up, and he's swinging on the tree. He's having some fun today, and I'll even put some shaky lines down here to make it look like he's really swinging, he's waving, he's having fun. Some shading underneath here. That's fun, that fur. And I'll draw a little earlobe right there. Okay, it's almost done. <laughs> okay, he looks like he's having a good time. Draw, 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 practice your drawings. Stay in a real positive attitude, and remember, use texture in all your drawings. <laughs>